Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and uh, I have a, a bit of a confession to make on my last video. So on my last video, I was talking for a while at the introduction, and then as I turned the camera towards the computer monitor and uh, moved forward and closer to the monitor to talk about the uh, images and uh, paper on the uh, jet stream um, behavior, um, the sound uh, collapsed. It went much, much quieter. You probably had to turn up the volume. And there were a lot of theories that people were suggesting, you know, maybe it was in the editing software, but I don't have edit use editing software. Maybe it was... Um, you know, it's my new microphone, my new um, uh, Blue Yeti uh, microphone. You know, maybe it was on the carotoid uh, sound pickup or dual speaker or something in the wrong one. But um, it wasn't any of those things. Uh, you know, user error, basically. Um, I moved the mic uh, right close to me when I was talking. And then I turned the camera around and uh, shuffled over towards the computer monitor and forgot to move the mic in front of me. So the mic ended up being almost right behind me or over my shoulder, over my right shoulder behind me. But it's such a, you know, it's a good mic. So it did pick up what I was saying, but that's why the sound really dropped off. So. I, I thought I better confess that and, uh, you know, user error, you know, learning curve on it, etc. Um, so I'm heading off to COP, uh, flying out to, uh, to Scotland, uh, leaving Ottawa tomorrow afternoon and arriving in Scotland on the 27th at uh, something like 10 in the morning, checking into an Airbnb and... Um, getting figuring out the lay of the land in Glasgow, you know, where the conference center is, um, probably, you know, arra arranging for a, a two day uh, COVID test. I just, I passed the COVID test I had Sunday morning with flying colors. So, um, so far, so good, you know, lots of hoops to jump through when you when you travel. And um, I've got a cat sitting on my lap who's starting to become very restless and scratching. He's just, uh, he, he knows I'm going to feed him soon. So he's getting, he's extremely hyper and you may have heard this guy and, uh, you know, I'm, I haven't, I don't think I'm going to be able to fit him in my luggage. I was trying to figure out how I could get this guy, you know, smuggle him into Scotland, but I just don't think that will work. So. What I'll have to do is I'm staying at an Airbnb and uh, I'll have to go around in the neighborhood and try to find some, you know, strays so that I can, you know, or maybe ask, uh, you know, get to know the neighbors and uh, maybe find a, uh, find a, uh, you know, Scottish uh, Shackleton. I know you want to get down now. He knows the food's coming soon. Anyway, um, that's enough. Um, let's, let's talk about... Um, climate stuff, shall we? Or weather or something or some of the stuff I'll be talking about at the COP. I want to thank everybody who's contributed uh, to donate, uh, you know, to support my work. Um, you know, it's very, very, um, you know, I thank everybody. I thank you for just watching my videos and uh, hopefully uh, people can spread the word. I just want to mention um, what I'm going to talk about is going to be one of the first uh, press conference programs that I'm that I give, and I believe it's on the 31st. It's on the very first day of the COP when it opens. Um, it'll be in a press conference room recorded by the UN um, people, um, and um, it will be. I think they're supposed to be having a live feed, so keep wa watch it for my on my Twitter account and Facebook. And um, if it is going to be a live feed, I'll try to get the links of the live feed ahead of time. And if not, certainly give the links of the feeds afterwards. Um, 
So this morning, I've been. It's been a long day. It's uh, that's after midnight. It's uh, um, it's twelve thirty, um, and um, you know, I said to um, my family, I said, well, it, you know, I expect to fully be doing stuff till about three a.m. Um, you know, before I'm ready, feel ready to go to sleep, um, so that you know. I'm leaving, you know, it's, I have to be at the airport at 10, 15 or so a.m. So, uh, you know, I can get up and uh, get some stuff done. But I'm, I'm pretty much set to go. Um, had to do a lot of chasing around the house for electronic items, which uh, seem to have been absconded by, by um, my youngest uh, son. Um, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, and I, you know, when I pack, I end up uh, doing a tremendous amount of cleaning. You know, going through drawers, saying, "Oh, I haven't worn this for a while, and haven't worn this for a while, etc." But anyway, I the reason I was up at six a.m. is because I was on a panel, a Zoom panel, um, you know, for a uh, you know based uh, you know for a, a effort based in Dubai. And I was there at the on the invitation of the um, world talent um, economic world talent um, economic forum, and um, I've often done shows on that, so I will <coughs> provide the link to that. Um, and it was interesting because the Malaysian, uh, you know, there were a lot of uh, high level um, politicians and. Um, there was a U.S. senator was on the call, for example, um, a U.K. Uh, futurist, well-known futurist, um, a Malaysian government official who I believe is head of the climate um, work in Malaysia, et cetera, et cetera. So there's lots of people on the call. And um, of course, I had to uh, throw my suit on, so which is a good practice for COP. And I gave basically uh, a talk, which I'm going to start now. So I hope you're still um, still tuned in. Okay, so here we go. People around the world are really wondering what on earth is going on with our weather. Our weather seems to have gone haywire. It's crazy. It's disrupting lives, workplaces, homes of more and more people around the planet. Um, and, uh, you know, it's basically gone crazy. And it's part of the abrupt climate system change, which I've often talked about. Essentially, what's happening is climate casino chaos. Okay, so cities and regions um, and you know larger areas are being basically lucking out uh, in the climate casino you know there's torrential rains and flood leading to floods which flood out uh, parts of the city other regions are in severe drought uh, other regions are hit by massive turbocharged storms especially if you're on coastlines so the big question is why you know why is this happening why are we getting this weather weirding or weather wilding or weather whiplashing the whiplashing being where we go from one extreme to the other for example huge rainfalls one year with flooding massive uh, widespread flooding and then the next year uh, record-setting droughts and dryness and then the, the, the subsequent year after that back to um, record uh, torrential rains and flooding um, and I fully expect that this will continue and get much worse and will hit uh, the global food supply very soon I would give it five to ten years and cause global famine. Extreme weather events around the world are increasing in frequency, severity, and duration, and they're happening in new regions where they did not happen 
before. And the root cause of this, of course, the human cause is essentially fossil fuel subsidies. Fossil fuel subsidies is like a negative tax on carbon. It encourages burning, extracting, and burning carbon fossil fuels, carbon-based fossil fuels, and getting that excess carbon in the atmosphere ocean system, making things go haywire. The more proximate physical system cause is Arctic warming at a rate four to five times faster than the global average. Not two times, not three times, four to five times faster than the global average. This has tremendous implications on the entire planet. What happens in the Arctic doesn't stay in the Arctic. What happens is with this tremendous Arctic warming, um, the jet streams slow down and become wavier and become stuck in place. And we get all of these climate and weather extremes. And this, um, as the Arctic continues to warm, when we lose the Arctic sea ice, very soon the trends are all for the ice to disappear. It will be gone one September very soon. And then in subsequent years, the duration of no ice or the blue ocean event, as I, as I coined the phrase many years ago, uh, the duration of a blue ocean, open ocean, no ice will increase from to say uh, August, September, October, and then within a few more years to July, August, September, October, November, and within a decade or less with all of the cascading feedbacks uh, in play, uh, higher uh, permafrost melt, uh, you know, higher emissions of fossil fuels coming from the, uh, higher emissions of carbon rather coming from the Earth system, you know, uh, ocean sinks uh, decreasing, Amazon rainforest sinks decreasing, more and higher and higher temperatures, more and more wildfires, and we're off to a uh, very, um, very uh, catastrophic uh, situation across the world. And um, so basically, that's what's happening in a, in a nutshell. Um, that's something that we can look forward to or dread coming down the pipeline, coming down the, you know, in, in our in our near term uh, future. So I'm not going to go on in a long uh, explanation of what we need to do to stop this or if we can't even stop it. I'm just pointing out where we're heading and we're not changing course fast enough by any stretch of the imagination. So when you don't change course and you're heading somewhere, you end up getting there. So, so that's the gist of it. And um, yeah, I, I uh, have a lot of plans for the uh, climate co conference in, in Glasgow. And I will take some time when the conference is over to visit my mother's little hamlet or village of in Scotland and uh, to um, maybe uh, see some of the northern areas of Scotland, the Highlands. Uh, so my dad was um, from London, England, and my mom was Scottish. And amazingly, they managed to put aside Scottish English differences. And there are Scottish English differences and, um, you know, have a family which included me. So here I am talking to you. And, uh, you know, please follow my Twitter account. Please follow my Facebook page, uh, Instagram, LinkedIn. I've got to start posting to Reddit and all of these things. I do have a Patreon page, just Patreon Paul Beckwith. Um, if you prefer that to going to my blog at paulbeckwith.net where I have a PayPal for, you know, uh, the ability gives the ability of people to support uh, my 
my work and there was also a go GoFundMe to uh, help cover the expenses of, of this um, of this trip so all of the uh, you know all of the videos and things will be uh, you know done from uh, Scotland you know uh, somewhere in, in Scotland so you know Glasgow for the first couple weeks and then after that um, you know maybe Edinburgh and some of the other areas and I'll, I'll do numerous vlogs on um, mostly on climate change, mostly on extreme weather events. And then there's all of the press conferences, uh, which are 27 minutes long. And I'm doing things most days. It starts off, I think, I think there's a program for the first six days of the conference and then two on the seventh day or something. And then uh, programs also in, in the second, second week. Uh, lots of guests and uh, so yeah, I, I now I'm really uh, rambling and uh, I still have uh, work to do before I can, um, before I can, uh, you know, head off to sleep. Um, for example, um, I, I think I'll cut my hair. You know, if I look weird in my next few videos, it's because I've cut, tried to cut my hair uh, unsuccessfully. Uh, self-cutting, you know, good way to save cash, uh, you know, a skill that I learned uh, during the, uh, you know, pandemic times. And also, I, um, yeah, I, I, I uh, you know, how the old bolts holding toilet seats, uh, you know, tend to rust out over time. I don't know, especially when you've got uh, boys, when you, you know, when you're raising boys, uh, they're, they can, um, the rust tends to occur for some reason faster. Anyway, the bolts have given way, not just on one, but on two different uh, toilets. So I promised uh, my wife, Susan, that I would repair those before I left on my trip. She's driving me to the airport, so I think she's going to go and check that that promise has been fulfilled in order to take me to the airport on time. Otherwise, um, I'll be panicking with a wrench and the local, you know, at the local heart at the local hardware store. So anyway, thank you for listening. And uh, I look forward to uh, conveying lots of stuff to you over the next, um, my next uh, number of weeks, you know, with the COP26 climate conference in Glasgow, Scotland. Thanks again and bye for now.